Hi, this is Bob working on the SS9000 restoration here. And uh, I just got it all working here. Um, this is the first time I got it going. This is uh, January 30th, 2012. Got on the air this morning and talked to the fellows on uh, 80 meters on a round table. And uh, they got some very good reports. This rig was a total basket case. I mean, it couldn't have been any worse. And uh, I believe it or not, have uh, I figure roughly 96 hours in the restoration of this rig. Uh, to, today I just finished with uh, making up an LED readout. This is a uh, first prototype that I built of that. And uh, as you can see, it has small LEDs in it and uh, these LEDs were not acceptable they were very very dim and uh, <coughs> one of them went out even they're very very cheap so this is on a piece of perf board so I grabbed another piece of perf board and started over again with some better, better LEDs and this is the result I've got it working pretty doggone good as you can hear I've got uh, WWV in there So, uh, it's all working just fine now on all bands, and uh, I just thought I'd do a little bit of a presentation here and show uh, the LED readouts and how things are working. Uh, during the restoration of this rig, I'm going to read this off. This is some of the things that I have done. I don't think it's all of them. I did a lot more. First of all, a complete teardown. Took it completely apart. I washed the chassis and everything. I sanded it carefully. Then I took it and I repainted it with uh, copper colored paint, as you can see. And <coughs> then I reassembled the whole thing. Uh, I found the broken volume control. I was able to fix that. The uh, thing had popped loose and I just put it back together and rebent the tabs. I replaced missing parts on the power interface board. There was a transistor and several other parts missing on the power interface board. The uh, power amplifier, I put that on the bench. I replaced 27 dipped mica capacitors that somebody had robbed off of there for parts. Uh, I replaced a defective pre-driver transistors. I repaired three broken plug-in jumper cables. I rewound the final input toroid coil. I replaced two electric electrolytic capacitors. Replaced one trim pot. Replaced a low power select plug that goes on the back of the rig so you can select low power. That was gone. Somebody robbed that for parts. I replaced uh, uh, transistors, the, uh, the uh, driver transistors. One was open. I replaced the LM2904 uh, IC that uh, controls the idle current to the finals. And the socket was broken, so I replaced that. I replaced all the rear power connector. Uh, I didn't have a power connector like that. You can't buy them, so I put in a different type of power connector. I also replaced the big uh, Q1 power transistor that goes down in here, right here. Uh, that socket was broken too, so I put in a new socket and a new transistor. So that's been replaced. The uh, power inverter board in here had uh, two shorted diodes and a burned up transistor in it, and those were replaced. And then uh, then I cleaned and uh, cleaned. I took out and cleaned every IC in the rig. I used a ground strap when I did that to be sure I didn't zap them with static. And I cleaned them with a uh, with a pencil eraser. Then I put a very very tiny amount of silicon grease on my finger and wiped the pins with silicon grease to prevent further con corrosion and put them all back in. I spent more than a whole day just cleaning the ICs. And then uh, uh, let's see. Where are we at here? The final transistors. <laughs> One was shorted, so I had to replace the final transistors. I had eight of them here that were pullouts that I bought at Dayton Hamfest years ago. Uh, and so I managed to find two of those that matched up close enough to work, and they're in there doing a pretty good job. And uh, let's see. Uh, then I tested all the low pass and high pass filters. Uh, for all the bands, made sure they were all up to specs and working properly using the signal generator and uh, oscilloscope and another receiver. So I got those all taken care of. Then I reassembled everything, put it all back together. 
I found then that the preamp board was not working correctly. The preamp board's down in here. It had a, there's a transistor in the preamp board that keys the relay in the back of the final. And that, uh, and that transistor was bad, so I had to take it all back out and replace that transistor. So, uh, <laughs> so then it all started working, but I didn't have the digital readout. Uh, then I found out that the vacuum fluorescent display tube, I'm using this camera by hand, by the way, so I can get around and show everything here. And uh, this display tube is cracked. You can see on the end here, uh, right under inside my hand here, there's a white spot showing that the vacuum uh, has been, uh, it, it's broken. It's got a crack in it. Anyhow, uh, and that's the part number there. It's the part number is 17MT34. I looked all over for that, could not find one. So then I started constructing my own digital readout. Uh, this was my first prototype board here. The LEDs are uh, very cheap, uh, very small, um, generic LED uh, digits. And one of them failed before I even got this thing built. And I had to take it back out and replace it. And then I found out that they were current hogs and had to have a whole lot of current. They needed 20 mils of current just so you could see them. So uh, this project here, this one here, I just scrapped it. I uh, cut off another piece of perf board a little bit wider and put better digits in there, which you can see in there now. Uh, the only thing that's wrong with it is now I'm driving these digits with the original drivers used for the vacuum fluorescent display. And the only thing wrong with that is I had to use a resistor uh, in series with each digit on the common terminal. And what that does is when you have a 1 uh, that shows up on there, you can see the 1's how much brighter they are. <laughs> when you have a 1 on there, then it's not drawing that much current in the LED, so the voltage to the LED is a more, a more voltage, so they're a little brighter. So uh, when you dial in there and you get uh, a different digit, you can see how they change the brightness. There's a 1 again. See how bright it is. So anyways, So that's, uh, that's, that's the deal here. We fought, got her back on the air. We got the LED uh, readouts in there. And uh, like I say, I'm driving them with the uh, drivers they used. I did use uh, seven, uh, eight, uh, no, eight, because of decimal points. Eight uh, 2N2222 transistors in the emitter circuits to drive the segments. And here's the circuit I used right here. It's just scribbled out on a sheet of paper. And uh, just a simple little circuit. 15K to the base and a, uh, and a uh, 3.3K to ground. Uh, and I made up uh, seven of those and they're mounted on the board just like this one is here. You can see those mounted on the edge there, the little transistors. And uh, they're around there and then there's some more over around here where my thumb is. Uh, but uh, those are running the drivers, driving the segments, the segments. Now the actual uh, LEDs themselves each have a, uh, a common terminal and those go to the terminals that were the grids on the original tube. So that's it was very, very difficult to mount in there, very difficult. So I had to, uh, and to, in order to get it in there, I had to sacrifice one digit. Uh, there just wasn't room. So uh, I'm short one digit on the right hand side there. So that's, that's the reason there's a little decimal point there on the right hand side. And I decided, well, I could disconnect those decimals on those digits, but I'd have to take it all out to do that. So I'm not gonna bother with that right now. It's working, I'm gonna leave it together. So that's it guys, I just wanted to show off what I was doing here and uh, list this and show it so that maybe somebody else out there will have to do the same thing. And maybe this will be helpful. So that's it. 73s and good DX.